I take this opportunity? You just mentioned how MMT, if done as prescribed in the theory, would be very different than what people perceive to be MMT. What is what are the key aspects of theoretical MMT that would make that difference? So the big thing, so to kind of like back up and explain basically what MMT is, MMT basically says that the government runs a currency monopoly. And so when they implement a currency, any fiat currency, um, it causes all sorts of problems in the economy, mainly that the private sector needs to obtain the currency to pay taxes and you need to get money to have a job. And so right off the bat, like working from like a very, very basic first principle perspective of MMT, an MMT economist would say that the second that a government like the United States starts the U.S. dollar, they unemploy everybody. So everybody's unemployed at the base level and everybody needs to obtain money to be able to pay their taxes. And so it, this is what ends up happening basically is that if the, if there is some level of unemployment, an MMT economist would say that's the government's fault. The government left these people unemployed because they're not giving them the money they need to get to be able to even have an, you know, an income. And so MMTers basically say that unemployment is a sign that the government hasn't either spent enough or hasn't provided people explicitly with jobs. And so this is totally different from like mainstream econ because mainstream econ basically argues that a level of unemployment that exists is probably optimal. So like in a, in a full employment economy where inflation is starting to get hot, even if you had like two or 3% unemployment, a mainstream economist would say that's optimal. We're using all of our resources in the most optimal way at present. And an MMT economist would look at that and say, no, we're, we're not employing two to 3% of people that could otherwise be employed and being productive. And who knows where inflation would be if those people had a job. You, you so mentioned like, you mentioned a key point there on productivity. Like if they could be employed productively, and this is this is the the challenge that I always have with okay, so that last three percent of people who need to be employed, are there productive employment for those people, or are we paying them to <clears> dig <throat> holes and fill them in again? And what are the implications of uh, unproductive? This is never it's never been done before. That's one of the things that like I. You know, when I first encountered MMT and there were all these, I was having all these discussions with like the founders of the theory. And I was like, how essential is this job guarantee thing? Cause this thing sounds like it's a big, a big problem potentially. And they were, uh, they were kind of wishy-washy on it. Like back then they didn't even really know, you know, how essential it was. Some of them were like, no, 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 this is, this is the essential framework that makes MMT MMT. And others were like, like Warren Mosler, um, he, he was saying basically like, oh, it's not really essential. It's of course we advocate for it, but it's not like essential to have it. And so it, it, since then, I mean, my view basically is that you don't have MMT without the job guarantee because the job guarantee, it's the core, it's the core policy that does everything interesting inside of an MMT paradigm. It gives everybody a job and they'd argue that because the government is able to set the wage inside of the job guarantee, they argue that it can provide price stability too. So, you know, but this is, it's never been done before. So that's the thing, the big red herring for me is like, you know, looking at things from, or trying to always look at things from like an evidence-based perspective, I'm always like, well, where's the evidence that this works? You know, is there any evidence that this works the way that you think it does? And they can't really answer that question. So that to me is, I mean, it's pretty, pretty worrisome. I mean, personally, I, I suspect that a job guarantee would work in a country like the United States because the United States is just a hugely wealthy country that, I mean, it can, it can support probably big programs like that and has historically supported similar type of programs. Um, where this gets really messy though, is it like, 
Like I always theorize like, well, what if Italy, what if Italy got tired of using the Euro and being beholden to Germans and said, you know what, we're going to bring the Lira back and we're going to bring the Lira back and we're going to implement a full MMT style regime and we're going to give everybody a job and oh yeah, we typically run current account deficits and so we don't make as much stuff as the Germans and so we're not necessarily as productive and you know, how would that play out? I don't know. I suspect it would not play out great. Um, and is that because the, well, this is, this the economy is like, isn't big enough? It, like it, it, it's, is it? You're, what, you have loans it? out in the in U.S. dollars and euros. At, a, at a, if you're not productive <laughs> and you can't pay them, you have less control of what you can do, and it leads to the hyperinflation that let, that in Peru when we when yeah, I yeah, or even I, like, like people don't realize like you don't even need like a hyperinflation like. I mean, 10 to 20% inflation mm -hmm. is, it's awful. It, it, it fucks up a lot of people's lives. Um, and you're starting to see that, you know, some signs of that, at least in the United States right now, where people, especially people in like the, the middle class and lower middle class, they're starting to, to really see this impact them in a meaningful way. And they're saying, you know, you know, this is no bueno.